and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Bell. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024. It is a little more than 60 seconds after the bell, but regardless of that, it is still time to go beyond the charts, beyond the news, beyond the eclipse, beyond the bell. Uh, I am Trader Matt, your host, and this show, as always, is brought to you by our good friends over at the Blue Sky Trading Company for the clearest path to a live brokerage account and live trading with, every day with Mike in the Discord. And this outstanding show, you have no reason to get your content or to get your accounts anywhere else. So, guys, in the markets, I, I really just have two wishes on any given day, right? Be interesting, like don't be boring, and to make a little money. Uh, today did both. Not the not the best trading day I've had in 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 a while. But I, I finished the day green, a few hundred bucks. That's and and uh, didn't really pay that much attention to the clips. I'm just outside of the totality, so we didn't get like the great show, and I wasn't traveling two hours with a bunch of people to to, to go do that. Um, I saw I saw the one a few years ago, so I'm 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 fine. I'd rather. Uh, uh, sit and look for some opportunities. But to those that uh, that saw it today, I hope you enjoyed your experience. And uh, now the sun's back out. Let's get back to it. And with that in mind, guys, it is time to talk about the big picture. Yeah, Tio, I, I, honestly, it's the safest way to watch it. You know, um, there was a just a quick aside here. Um, a lot of I found out actually a lot of the um, eclipse glasses that were in the area here were like counterfeit and bad and not so people staring, you know, now I've, I've got a buddy might say, like, man, I was looking at this, now I got a headache. All right, you know, I, yeah, I watched a little on TV. I did, uh, uh, I had a, an old pair of glasses. I looked for just a minute at uh, when the, uh, it, the it, when it, I think we got like 90% where I'm at. I mean, it was, I mean, it was interesting. It was worth watching. Like, again, I'm, is it worth me taking an, a, a day out for something I saw a few years ago? No, not necessarily. You know, if you didn't see it or you didn't have to travel far, spend money. And say, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, we trade so that we have the freedom to do these kinds of things, guys. Right. And if you you know, if it was something that was like really interesting to me, I probably would have done it. And I have a lot of friends who did some traveling to. Hey, good for them. Right. That's that's part of the free like we taught like the money in this business is great when we can be really good at everything. Right, guys. Like we we love that. We enjoy that. But to me, it's the freedom to to do things like honestly guys you know i i have a, a community that i uh, of traders that i work with and obviously you know the blue sky discord and this show and all that um but it is a minimal amount of drama for me to take a day off right like i don't have to call a boss i don't have to file a pto request or anything like that and and you know i've taken gosh you know guys last uh, last october i took a three-week vacation and i did some trading where i was at right it's it's you know, it's that freedom. It's it's yeah, awesome. So anyway, uh, this is an interactive show, guys, and I do want to uh, give a shout out to my good friends in the chat. We've got uh, uh, Tio, Mike, James, Ed, James, Vera, Normal. You're you, you're new. I haven't seen you, or you haven't commented. Welcome, Midpoint Trading. Welcome, help. Welcome, hope. Excuse me. Welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, this is not one of those hold your questions to the end. We do have a question segment, but if you got a question about what I'm talking about, guys, jump on in and ask it. So. Very interesting, and I've zoomed in quite a bit, and I do want to zoom out a little bit just to kind of show you where we are in the overall charts. We talked about this area between 18,500 and about 18,100-ish, right? And so now we, we've we really pegged ourselves to – what? Uh, let me get this line up to – you know what? I'm going to get – just for simplicity's sake, we're going to get rid of this line. We're going to bring this right down here to approximately – the 18300 now we're going to zoom back in so uh guys we're basically just dealing with a market the good news is the market is giving us some movement right we we're getting up to the 375 to 400 area we've been getting down about the 250 area so there you know there were some trades to be had today but we are a market moving without any kind of consistency and without any kind of direction or conviction right now and and how do we know that right well, first of all, we've got all these, what do you want to call them, wicks, tails, shadows, guys, the, the language is, uh, uh, can be a little different, right, depending on where you're getting this information. But look at this. This is a market that just doesn't have a whole lot of conviction right now. Every single one of these four-hour candles is, is closing almost where it ended or, or where it opened, right, and, and we're getting, we are, again, we're getting movement. We're getting enough movement. What I like to see uh, you know, this this range is basically 125, 130 points. I'd like to see that closer to 2 to 250 because, you know, a 2 to 250 range, even if you don't get all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, there's opportunities, right? Uh, in this case, it just, yeah, um, there were some opportunities, but just not a ton. And again, we're, we're, we're actually no different than we were a couple weeks ago. We're sort of in between a lot of uh, market events, right? And, and there's a 
looking more and more like there's a chance that the Fed is not going to uh, drop rates as many times as they initially indicated. So who knows, right? Like, and, and we don't focus too much on that kind of stuff, but we do want to know when the big events are coming. We still have a couple, couple three weeks, I think, till the next FOMC meeting. Uh, we should be getting, I mean, we're kind of got earnings going on. We're getting into earnings season a little bit. Uh, yeah, so just, you know, I think this is sort of the last few weeks. And really, if we zoom out a little bit, other than a couple of really big candles, right? Like if you wanted to get rid of this candle here and this candle here, I mean, there's been, again, been movement, but not as much as necessarily as we like. Uh, if we get over to the ES, again, we will see very similar activity there, just a zone of consolidation enough to trade, but maybe not as big as we would like. Club trading, hello, dragon, hello. Yeah, very happy to be here. If, if this is your first show, I hope it's your first of many. Uh, and, and yeah, that's... Uh, it's uh yeah <laughs> just kind of one of those days right this was this was uh yeah even the markets today guys if we get to the five minute uh we had some good movement early let's get my so right at 8 30 was sort of like 8 30 and this is 8 30 central so 9 30 eastern we basically was the biggest move of the day right at the open. And and I know there are people that trade the open, like right at the open. And I know there's people that do it pretty consistently, make money, good for them. That's really not how I do business, right? And we, re we really showed early on that we're really pegging and pinning to this 300 point, right? We, we want to talk about the markets being pinned to that or like, you know, the old, the old uh, wooden things that you have a peg in the, the you, you get it, right? Um, but anyway... Because every time we approach 300, again, look at this. Even on the five minute, all of these different, same thing in this area here. And really, guys, after the markets were not very tradable after about uh, after lunch, right? Just not a lot of range. ATR down here at about 15. Uh, I've told you guys ATR and dev width are two things I pay a lot of attention to to help me determine uh, the mark, you know, the movement in the markets. Uh, and just not, uh, yeah, okay, Reginald, 3% on Thursday, 1.6% today. That's outstanding. Congratulations. Keep it up, man. That's, that's, we always like to, like to celebrate successes in here. Anyone pass an eval in the last few days? You're welcome to raise your hand or, uh, um, a blue sky eval. And we're not, we're not, we're not bragging about other companies in here, but if you pass a blue sky eval, I always want to know about it. Make sure you get in here and tell me that because I want to acknowledge you. Uh, yeah, Teal, that's right. Congratulations, man. Um, yeah, you and I obviously, uh, uh, Tio's part of my community, so we we talked earlier today. But yeah, anytime and, and listen, it, you know, is that is passing your first combine or even uh, like the next one going to be the one that makes you a million dollars? I I don't know. May, I hope so, right? But in actuality, guys, most of the people that I've talked to that and, you know the prop firm groups like like Blue Sky um, are are new to the trading world, right? Like they're not. I mean, there's been prop firms in one way, shape, or form for quite some time, but the easily accessibility of uh, have you know trading for a living when it comes to futures with with uh, firms like Blue Sky is, is fairly new, right? It's really blown up since the pandemic. Blue Sky I think's been around two to three years, um, and again has the clearest path to a to a live brokerage accounts. Why and, the, and a commitment to education, which is why I got along so well with those guys, and why I'm here doing this show with their sponsorship. So, uh, but yeah, it, it may not be like it's it, like plan on that account being the one making you millions. But don't be overly disappointed if you make a mistake or two. If you did it once, you can do it again. Now, here's the thing. Anybody, if you pass your first, you know, again, this is why everyone I understand, you don't like consistency rules. Like, you'd love to pass on one day. But, guys, even the worst trader in the world could have a really good day trading and pass an eval, pay the pay the fee. You know, some places have set up fees for funded. Uh, Blue Sky does not, which is, you know, a big, a big benefit there. And... You know, it's okay if that's not your your last go at funded, right? So a lot of people, and, and I I just talked to a gentleman the other uh, the other day um, who had two funded accounts and and blew them, but then the third one now he's made his his third withdrawal and has withdrawn a total of about ten thousand dollars, right? And that's great, that's outstanding. That is just so it, acknowledge the progress that you made. Whether it's your first, anytime you pass a, a combine, guys, especially with Blue Sky, because again, they have things like consistency rules. Um, their reg, some of their regular accounts have trailing drawdowns, right? And and yes, that makes them more difficult to to pass. But you know what? It's not supposed to be easy, right? Like the old Tom Cruise or Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks quote in League of Their Own. 
it, this, of course it's hard. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do this, right? And and I talk so much in, the, in part of this show, we talk about some of the common pitfalls that traders, hey guys, I still have some of the same trading issues that I had when I first started. Now, I, you know, I don't let those things affect my trading as much, right? I, I was a chaser, I'm a reform chaser. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm a chaser. Uh, and I still have to resist that urge. The urge is no less now than it was six or seven years ago. What's different is I don't act on that. Like, the, you know, seeing something run, right? And, oh, I got to be in it. I, like, that's sometimes, guys, you know, I got my mouse right here. Sometimes I just, I have to remove my hands, right? My, take my hand off my mouse. If, if, if I'm really getting it, sometimes I got to walk away from the computer for a minute, right? I'll walk in, you know, um, my office is just about a, 15 step walk to my kitchen. I'll go in the kitchen, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of water, get a snack, whatever, right? So I, my point with all this is, is we've gotten completely off on the, uh, uh, you know what? We're going to go ahead and make this the lesson of the day just so I can get my segments in, right, guys? I worked hard on these graphics. I got to use them at some point. But yeah, don't, the key, one of the keys in this business, guys, is to never get too far up or don't get too far down, right? Don't, don't ever be in a situation where you're just, Gosh, I'm 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 I suck so bad at this. I'm never going to be successful. Like you, you can get in these negative feedback loops, right? Don't ever do that. Also, don't ever think you got it all figured out, right? I, I'm sorry. I, the 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 best traders that I've talked to are people that have been profitable some, in some cases for decades, right? And they'll be the first ones to tell you, yeah, you know what? I've been doing this for a long time. I'm pretty darn good at it, uh, you know. But that could all change tomorrow. Right to have a health. No, we never fear the markets, but we always have a healthy respect for them. And guys, the markets, the market has a hundred. You know, you say Father Time is undefeated. Well, the markets have a hundred percent chance of humbling any trader who needs to be humbled. Right? Some of the and don't get me wrong. I I have I'm very good at this. I have a I have a healthy ego about the markets and my ability to trade them. Right? There's nothing wrong with being confident. You can't be arrogant. You can't be cocky because you will that that train of thinking will help you make mistakes. And the markets, the markets will punish uh, the the cocky every single time. But yes, to uh, to To there, congratulations on passing. Uh, honestly, man, let, let let this be the account that changes your life. I wish that for you. And uh, and then obviously, you know, you and I work together a little bit. So, oh, look at that! I got disconnected there. Okay, sorry, my. Uh, Oh, I don't have that on the screen right now. My my trading view disconnected because I forgot to close it on my on my computer upstairs before I came down. So yeah. So anyway, uh, oh, you know, guys, I did have. We're gonna go to the mailbag because I did have a couple of questions that I had uh, when I emptied out the mailbag the other day that we didn't have a chance to uh, catch up on, and so I wanted to. Let's see, we did. Um. Okay. So I got I got, uh, I got a, a an email from uh, it says what is the the ADD okay uh, and I'm assuming you don't mean attention deficit disorder <laughs> dealt with that most of my life so I understand but the ADD is the advanced decline difference I have it on a chart here let's go to this okay there we go so let me pull this up here so the ADD is the advanced decline difference in uh so you'll see it described in a lot of ways so you see add here sometimes it will have a dollar sign in front of add because it's not tradable the add itself i'm i'm actually not aware if there's any uh derivatives on the add like there are the vix i don't know for a fact i don't think there are uh or you'll just see it as the the advanced but it, it's as you see down here if you can't see it, it says nyse dollar sign advance minus if uh, DCE, I, I don't know what, the, but anyway, it's the advanced decline difference is what the ADD stands for. So the New York Stock Exchange is has issues which are we commonly refer to as stocks, and so when what the ADD measures, okay, and and ticks do this to a lesser degree, but what the ADD measures is the difference between any of those stocks that are green versus red. So for example, okay, let's say there were ten stocks in the stock exchange there's way more than that but let's just say there were 10 okay and six are green and four are red so the add would be plus two right there's two more green than red so what the add does is basically tells us and here i can zoom as you can and i zone it up like this guys 
Okay, this is, and and sometimes you need an additional data feed for this, guys. I get the extra $7 a month uh, sub subscription through TradingView that gets me access to this. Um, you guys are welcome to DM me. I'll, I'll I don't, I, I don't know if I can pull it up without showing account information right now, but I'll be happy to send people a screenshot if they're interested. So my general rule of this, so if, so if this is at zero, that means the exactly the same amount of stocks are red versus green. Now, for me, I'm only really interested in this when it's above 1,000 or below negative 1,000, okay? And in this is a guideline, not a rule, okay? So a guideline, something I'm going to follow almost every time, but, you know, there are exceptions, whereas a rule, you don't break your rules, okay? So with the ADD, if it's above 1,000, I will generally not take short trades. And if it's below negative 1000, I will generally not take long trades. Okay. This can also help me, you know, we, we talk about a, a thesis, right, right? Like right now, as we just hover around 300, I'm, I have a neutral thesis. I really don't have a bullish or bearish thesis right now. But let's say I have a bullish thesis. Okay. Let's say we break out above 300, we're headed to 500 tomorrow. So we're up at 18400. And the ADD is up at plus 1300 up here, right? In that situation, I can say that 95% of the trades I'm going to take are going to be long trades, right? It, again, guideline, not a rule, but I'm going to be uh, very adamant about looking for long trades. For me to take a short trade, it better be an A++++ plus 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 setup, right? So uh, again, nice little tool you guys can use. It, it, you know, for, for me, for newer traders, guys, for... You heard me talk about if you're really struggling as a trader, one suggestion, I'm not going to say advice or I'm not going to say do this. One suggestion is to only take long trades above VWAP or short trades below VWAP, especially if you're somebody that over trades. If you're somebody that's trading 20 to 25 to 30 times a day and you're not consistently profitable. OK, um, so another one to look at is potentially this ADD and tell yourself if it's above 1000, I will not take short trades. If it's below negative 1000, I will not take long trades. Now, yes, you'll tell yourself that. And probably the first time you the ADD will be plus 1800, like an extreme positive reading. And then you'll you won't you'll pass on a short trade and then you'll it would have been a huge winner. Right. Like these things happen. I any 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 absolutely any tool or anything that you use to help you determine like general thesis it's going to it's going to cost you at some point but the idea is again it's all about the probabilities it's all about putting the odds uh, you know what was the the you know the odds ever in your favor or whatever the i don't know was that hunger games or i don't know what are those young adult things that are all the same right now uh so yeah so again this is just one of those tools i use um Nolan, I hope that I hope that answers your question there. Uh, hopefully, you were watching because you sent me that question a few days ago. But if not, uh, <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, James, I'm sorry, Jameen was uh, the this last question comes for. How do you know when you're ready to size up? And that is an outstanding question, Jameen. So let me sort of generally answer that in a couple of ways. The the shortest but most complicated answer to that question is simply when you know you're ready, right? Well, I think that the heart behind your question is, how do you know when you're ready, right? For me, I, again, I'm, I started this a few years ago and I took a long time to size up, right? Like I essentially started trading micros just a few years ago and it took me about four to four and a half years to size up from a single micro to three minis, right? Which is, which is 30 micros, the equivalent of 30 micros. So I've taken a long time to do that. In fact, maybe a little too long, okay? Um, I'm planning on being up to four by the end of this year, maybe the end of this summer, depending on how things go. So for me, though, I need to demonstrate consistent profitability. And in reality, that means multiple years. But of course, especially with, you know, the prop firm situation, nobody's uh, nobody's going to be looking at that. Right. Nobody's nobody's going to be waiting for t for two years to size up. But let, so let me say this, guys. I think when you for in, in the situation of a prop firm, right. I would wait at least until you have, let's say, four out of five weeks green, right? And and not just a little green, right? Where let's say you start with, I, I, I always recommend three to five micros as a great starting point. And again, I know we get into situations where um, 
where there's time issues, right? Like, oh, I got to pass this this eval before um, the, the renewal because I can't afford the renewal. Well, I, again, guys, as I said before, if you can't afford the renewal, you probably shouldn't have gotten the thing in the first place, right? I always recommend, quick aside, at least two months of, of fees and at least two resets that you have set aside, right? And, and so the, that instant pressure to say, I have to succeed before this renews. Again, as I said in last week's show, uh, responding to, to, to another question, the moment you feel like you need to be successful, like, oh, man, I have to be successful in this. Trust me, from somebody who made this stupid mistake when I first started, that is a mentality that will just eat at you, and it will make it infinitely harder than what is already a very difficult and hard situation, right? So for me, let's say you're, again, I feel like I need to take this question outside of the context of prop firms, all right? So let's say this is when you get to the brokerage and the prop firm or you're trading your own money. Again, I, I always recommend starting three to three to five micros. So about three, let's say three micros. Once you've had two to three months of profitability, then you can scale up to five to eight, then eight to 10. And again, then then it should take, for, for it should take you a full year in my not so humble opinion, to get from three micros up to, let's say, two minis, okay? It, it just should be a long process, and you should get used to... See, one of the toughest things for me, guys, is, is I've said many times, one of my edges is I don't sit here and take big losses, okay? I, I The number of, of four-figure losses that I, t uh, that I took last year was just... It, I could count them on both hands, Right now, there's been more this year because I've increased my position size. That's the biggest adjustment for me. Yeah, I love seeing the extra wins. Right, seeing on average an eight to eleven hundred dollar win turn into a thirteen to fifteen hundred dollar win. Right, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I have to instead of taking four to five hundred dollar losers, get used to in some cases eight hundred to a thousand dollar losers. So that affects me, and I need to again be aware of those types of things. I'm gonna catch up on the questions here, Mike. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I, I don't. I don't look at the uh, 80, 80 QD. Um, maybe I should. I don't know. Uh, depend on everyone's risk tolerance. Well, that's that's correct, Makar. But again, now let's bring this question back into the realm of prop firms, guys. You can blow out. You know, you have a, a what a thousand dollar daily loss limit here, and that's the case at a lot of other places too. Whether it automatically fails you or it just fails you for that day guys how many of you have ever done that on your first trade right like i don't want to say show of hands because not every you know some people admit it but some some people won't guys it, it, you know i here's a rule of thumb i've always I, i've said this on this show there are times guys where again because i know myself as a trader that uh, yeah uh, reginaldo thank you for your honesty uh I know myself as a trader that when i get into a trade and i set my stop loss and i'll set my my profit target right so within 10 seconds of being in a trade, guys, because I know where I'm going to set my stop loss before I even get in the trade, and I know where I'm going to set my initial profit target, usually for either a half position or third position, okay? That's all going to happen 10 to 15 seconds after I get into the trade, right? So I'm if I start to get a little antsy, right? So I'm, oh gosh, you know, this trade's kind of going against me. Should I move my stop up here? So I was expecting, you know, it, okay, that could have been a $900 loser. Uh, but if I, I, I skip, okay, if I raise my stop here, I said, okay, but that first, ooh, it's really going in my direction. That first profit, should I move that up? Should, if, I, if I start to get that dialogue in my head, I know my stop loss is, is set in, in the market, right? So barring an act of God or the, or the exchange is shutting down, my, my order's in the market, so I'm not, you know, even if my computer goes down, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. So I, you know, again, there's a 99.99999% chance that if the trade goes against me, I'm going to stop out where I chose to stop out, right? So with that in mind, sometimes I need to physically get up and walk away, right? And, and again, the downstairs in my house is kind of like a little loop. I've got a uh, family room, kitchen, office, entryway, dining room, right? So I can, I, you know, I'll just walk a couple of laps, um, or, you know, I, sometimes I'll take my dog out really quick or I'll go, like I said, if it's, if I'm ready for my second cup of coffee, I'll go get that. I'm not saying I'm away from my screen more than two or three minutes. And I do turn up my speaker. So if I hear an order fill, right, either I know I stopped out of the trade or I took my first profit target. If I stopped out of the trade, there's nothing left for me to do except clear my orders. But if it's a, if it's a profit target hit, then I need to figure out where I'm going to set my, my, I need to move my stop up to break even on the rest. And I need to put in um, the next profit target, whether it's for another third position or to close out the remaining half of the position. So these are all things that I've, uh, um, I, I, I go through. But again, if I find myself second guessing and, getting, and the emotions get in the way, I will the, the only thing that can screw up the trade at that point 
it, you know, is me. And so I remove myself from the situation. So again, just, to, but if you can't do, do that, if you cannot physically stand up and even turn, I, I had somebody do this once. This is an exercise I did with somebody while they were trading. I said, the next time you're in a trade, okay, I want you to just you enter the trade, set your stop loss. And you have, a, I said to him, you got a swivel chair, you know, that you can spin around. He said, yeah. I said, I want you to turn your back to the screen for 10 seconds. He physically could not do it. He could not allow himself to look away from the screen. And I said, okay, your position size is too big. If you can't do that, your position size is too big. Well, you know, if it goes against me, okay, then your position size is too big. I used to tell, when I was coaching option swing traders, I used to tell people, if you're, you know, and the options market is very specific, it only trades between 930 and four, there's no pre market, there's no post post market, anything like that. I said, if you get into a situation where you're, uh, you know, open, it's staring at the ceiling at 2am, right, because you don't, you, you're, oh, gosh, I need this, I, your, your position size is too big. I'm not saying don't worry about your trades, or don't be concerned about your trades. But you know, that's what I would tell people. And some people really shouldn't have had more than two or three contracts on that have 20 contracts on. Separate asset, um, but you, you guys get it. So, all righty, guys. So I think we're winding down a little bit here. I do want to put, if you have any questions, okay, because I'm now through the catch-up of questions, you're more than welcome to even reach out. Uh, Trader Matt on Discord, again, I will never uh, cold message you, but if you have any questions uh, about uh, about anything, trading related you are more than welcome to reach out please give me a few hours to respond if it's especially if it's during the trading day you can also reach me at matt at tiresias trading.com that's t-i-r-e-s-i-a-s trading.com well guys it is uh monday is in the books eh, it was all right decent trading not nearly as bad as it was a couple weeks ago gosh i never want to go through a week like that again but this is the nature of the markets price action contraction leads to price action expansion it's the only guarantee in the markets uh, it may not happen as quick as we always like it, and it may some of it may happen unexpectedly, but that's the only inviolable law of the markets. Price action contraction will lead to price action expansion, will lead to price action contraction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, guys. So, so thank you for tuning in for another edition of Beyond the Bell. I wish you the absolute best. For those of you that maybe you're going to be catching the eclipse here in the next couple hours, be safe. Make sure your glasses are certified and all that. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and I will see you tomorrow for another edition of Beyond the Bell. Good night.